Hello brothers at sea, I have something to share to you that will really show the importance of this episode. The ship was just launched from dry dock and maneuvers its way to open sea. The owners and representatives of the ship had just disembarked and the new crew were on their own. Five minutes into the maneuver, the engine hands heard over the radio a conversation by chief officer and the newly boarded ordinary seaman. Close valve 503 there mate. 503 sir. Okay sir. Close valve 503. Few minutes later, the accommodation air conditioning plant sounded as it trips. Port engineer went to check and reset the alarm. Few minutes later, the reefer machine plant sounded an alarm. Shortly after, another alarm sounded. But this time, it's the main engine jacket cooling fresh water high temperature. By this time, all engine hands rushed to find the cause. The main engine slowed down shortly after the alarm and it was found out that the main cooling seawater pump had a heated suction pipe and no suction pressure due to a closed high sea chest valve. Upon opening, everything started to go back to normal. What could have caused the trouble? What could be the consequences? What could the crew have done to avoid the incident? Come, let us learn something important which will be a part of our foundation as a seafarer on board. The situation happened due to many reasons once we tackle the backstory. But the main reason why the incident happened was the ordinary seaman saw a valve labeled as WC503V near the ballast valves when he went in the engine room. Thinking that it was the valve he was looking for, he closed it right away and left, not knowing that the valve he was supposed to close was WB503. It is clear that the ordinary seaman is not familiar with the diagrams, and because of that, the consequences and possibilities are very dangerous. That is why in this episode, we will be talking all about our diagrams and how to properly use them. Let's go! Tracing diagrams is a very important skill. Not knowing how to trace is like walking inside a ship blindly. Here are some important things you have to remember when using a diagram. Number 1. Familiarize first yourself with the symbols. This is a must in learning how to use diagrams. This way, you won't be tracing blindly and it is easier for you to interpret the system, especially when you are searching for causes of trouble. Number 2. See these tables? These tables can be found in the piping diagram manual at the first pages before you could reach the drawings. Do not ignore them. They are there for a reason. It is not necessary to memorize them. Just make sure you are familiar as you will see in the next episodes why it is important. Number 3. Let us talk about the parts of the diagram. Let us first take a look at this. Here, we can see the name of the diagram but this is not what is important. The drawing number. In diagrams, when there are lines that are connected from other systems, they are usually marked by drawing numbers. Although some others put the diagram name, but still, they put the drawing number. So take note of this. Next, this is the page number. This plays a little role since you will be using the drawing number more often. Next, this is remarks or notes section. This appears when there are specially important stuff in the system. Examples of diagrams where remarks or notes are always present are FO transfer system, bilge piping system, 
and main engine and GE FO service system. Next, this little symbol here is actually very important. This is what we call the flow head or flow direction. It directs you where the process is progressing. Just imagine a diagram without the small but very important symbols. It's totally more confusing. Another important symbol that we normally ignore is this. This symbol represents a flange. This serves as a clear division which removes confusion especially when dealing pipes of different sizes connected to each other. Another important symbol which is also ignored at times is the reducer. Some other drawings have this, some others do not. However, if the reducer plays a very big role in the system, then it is specifically drawn. The next ones will be even more important, so pay close attention. Did you see these labels on the lines and valves? These are what we call the pipe marks and valve marks. They play a huge role and have so much information to give if you know how to interpret this. We will be discussing what they mean in the next episodes of this series. Dashed lines. They actually mean so many. First. They represent spaces, specifically tanks, that are not readily accessible. Take this for example. Spaces like low sea chests and main engine LO sum tanks are spaces not readily accessible regardless of any ship arrangement. I pointed this out because there are some spaces that are readily accessible to some ships like this one while others are not depending on the ship arrangement. Secondly, just like the first point, dash lines does not only represent spaces but also pipes. Example of these are gauge pipes and suction pipes connected to the bell mouth. They are not readily accessible because they are inside tanks. However, not all inside tanks are drawn as dash lines. Example of which are steam lines, which here, you can see that it is drawn as a solid line. And like here, which is also a steam system, but it is drawn as a dash line. This is still depending on the perspective of the ones who designed the drawing. Third, dash lines also represent an area, example of which is this one. This represents an area protected with a combing. This one represents an area where you can find all these remote valves, which is the pump unit. Another example is this, which represents an area where this part here is actually a mooring winch hydraulic pump. It is in dashed line because instead of drawing a pump, what is shown here is the schematic diagram of the hydraulic pump's lube oil system. Lastly, these dashed lines represent electrical signals. Although you can see more of this in electrical manuals, they are still visible in piping diagrams. Next, this one here in semicircle represents a swing which means this is something connected to a hinge and can be opened in the direction of the semicircle. The next one is also important. Have you noticed that some valves have X's and O's in them? These symbols represent a normally closed or normally open valves. There are some that are labeled as shut lock or open lock, which means they are normally open or normally closed, but they are very delicate valves that could cause serious trouble when operated wrongly. That is why they are emphasized as locked. And when we say locked, there are locking device or chains that hold them open or closed. These X's and O's can also be found somewhere else aside from valves. The best example for this is here, flanges. These flanges are special because instead of having only a gasket between them, 
They also have special blinds which can be changed into a blind or open. This special blind normally looks like this. The X and O here means that the flange is normally blinded or normally open flange. The best example where you can find these kinds of flanges are in the stern tube system. These are the basics of our diagrams. Being familiar with this boosts our understanding with the system on board and it will really help us improve our tracing skill when troubleshooting. There are still a whole lot more things to learn regarding these diagrams. And this is just the beginning. More videos to come as this episode marks the beginning of our diagram series where we will tackle a lot of things about diagrams, labels, manuals, and many more. Thanks everyone for watching and see you in the next episodes. Don't forget to subscribe and please hit like button. Leave comments below and let me know what you think. Suggest and help us improve this channel. Keep safe everyone.